live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services, Intel, and their ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at AWS reInvent 2018 in Las Vegas. Day two of four days of coverage. I think we'll do 120 interviews. I mean, this is the most hopping show in tech right now. We're really excited to be here. And uh, joined by my co-host, Lauren Cooney. Lauren, great to see you. Thank you, great and to we've see got, you too. Uh, we've got our next guest. It's uh, Disha Chopra. She's the Senior Manager, Product Line Manager for Juniper Networks. Welcome. Thank you. I'm Feels great to be here. So Good. what do you think of this show? Have you been oh to Reinvent before? No, this is my first one and I am so excited. It, 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 the energy is so great, it's vibrant, I'm learning a lot, I'm very happy to be here. So Juniper's been around for a long time, way predating this cloud, this whole cloud thing. So what are you guys up to? What's the latest and really why are you here at Reinvent? What's your, yeah, what's your story yeah, at AWS? Absolutely. So I think the latest thing with us is um, as early as today, there was a, um, we were posted on the AWS Partner Solution, Partner Solution website. Vodafone is partnering with Juniper for their SD-WAN offering with you know, the SD-WAN controller is sitting in AWS, managing all their branch offices. So that's what's the newest with us. And uh, you know, we've been making waves with a lot of partnerships recently. Um, a couple of months ago, or maybe just a month ago, we announced with Nutanix. So that, uh, you know, that announcement was focused more for our enterprise customers. Uh, integration with Nutanix is uh, hyper-converged infrastructure where Juniper will be you know, an integral part of their networking providing for their uh, conversion infrastructure. And then before that, I think a few months ago we had Red Hat. We announced a partnership with Red Hat and you know, that's focused on our telco cloud. So as you were mentioning, Juniper's been around for a long time right. and uh, you know, telco clouds are our strong suite, telcos, now telco cloud, right? And similarly for enterprise. If you, if you think about it, you know, large enterprises and telcos are not that different, right? So that's where we, we were at. And uh, that's the more kind of, we're following the evolution like our customers are, right? They used to be telco, now they're telco cloud. Uh, Juniper, I think the newest thing with Juniper, to be honest, in technology, I spoke about partnerships, but it's our cloud first uh, strategy. That's what we have in mind. We are evolving with our customers, helping them in their journey for cloud adoption, cloud migration, right? It, it, it's a couple of sentences to say that, oh, we're helping our customers with cloud migration, but we're, you know, there's so many steps in between, they're very complex. Um, you need a lot of hand-holding, and we are right there for our customers. So, so what does that actually mean when you are, you know, saying that you're helping your customers? Are they, are you working with them to bring them multi-cloud solutions from AWS and Microsoft and Google or? Correct, you know, exactly. Can that, you give me a scenario or a use yeah, case? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, what, like I was saying, traditionally, uh, Juniper was you know, a hardware-focused company. So our existing customer base, they bought a lot of big heavy boxes from us, and of course on top of it uh, came a world-class routing and switching software component, right? And it was all bundled up and sold together. Now, with, you know, they're moving towards the cloud, towards AWS, towards GCP, towards Azure. Uh, we want to be able to provide to them, and who better to provide this service to them, we understand their on-prem network. We understand cloud networking. We understand the transport in between. So what we're doing is, um, for our customers, we manage their existing on-prem networks, which you know, a lot of our customers, you know, they're, they're huge and they have a significant amount of footprints, global footprint, right? So we understand that we, we were able to connect them to the AWS, to the GCP, to the Azure, right? And the value proposition for them is that if they wanted to do it themselves, they have to understand you know, three different or five different clouds, right? You have IBM, you have Digital Ocean, there's, there's a lot out there, right? And getting the OPEX or getting the, the talent to be able to understand all these things and do the migration, it's hard, right? This is a complex uh, problem to solve. So what Juniper brings to the table is we abstract it out. So for example, yeah. I wanted to- well, I just want to say, you know, one of the things that you're talking about here, and this is a total switch if I'm right, is uh, are you becoming a managed service provider? We we do have a managed service. Because it sounds like they're, you're going to be putting a lot more money into that side of the business Correct. versus the straight up yeah, product yeah, yeah. side of the yeah, business. Yeah, yeah, that's where we are pivoting from, you know, we want to 
our perception used to be that we are a hardware company, now we are a cloud first company, we are a software company. So we're definitely pivoting towards a soft, you know, software based solution, software based app, you know, offerings. It's like your iPhone, right, or your phone. You, you buy the hardware, but you're really buying it for the iOS or for the applications that run on it. Networking is following a similar paradigm now, right? It's the hardware boxes, they're definitely our bread and butter still, but it's the software now that's enabling and giving it all the cool factor and the innovation that's happening. It's all in the software. Um, Contrail, that's our story for multi-cloud. That's one of our product offerings. So what Contrail does is, and I think that's, that's what I was kind of referring to earlier, it gives you that higher level of abstraction where you don't have to worry about, am I, is my workload running in AWS? Is my workload running in GCP? It doesn't matter, right? That's you, uh, as, as a enterprise or as a telco, we want you to focus on uh, you know, powering your applications, powering your services. We don't want you to worry about your infrastructure. That's our job, right? We're, we want to completely hide all the complexity away from you and just you know, let you so, do what, you know, generate revenue. So as an application developer, right? So I'm, I'm an application developer yeah. um, and I use Azure, for example, right? And that's, yeah. that's kind of my platform and I'm, you know, doing some interesting stuff with like, you know, some scripting or I'm building, you know, just a general like new website or something like that with, you know, a couple different things. Um, so as a developer at that level, I don't even know about Contrail. Exactly, exactly. Exactly, but I don't think Contrail yet extends up to that layer where it can manage everything across multiple clouds. So it, it provides you as a developer, like you said, you're writing an application, you don't care about the infrastructure, it's just there, right? And, and we want to keep it that way. Contrail is there, Contrail is at that level. Contrail is going to provide the plumbing. So you as a developer, today everything, all developers are moving towards containers, right? So for example, the Red Hat partnership that I brought up earlier, that's focused on their Red Hat OpenShift platform, their PaaS service, which is a container-based service. Uh, Contrail integrates with Kubernetes, we integrate with Mesos, we integrate with Docker. So as a developer, when you employ these tools to write your code you know, using a CI CD platform, Contrail is sitting right under it, giving you that connectivity. So for example, when you're developing your application and you, know, you deploy it, you deploy part of it in Azure, you deploy part of it in AWS, right? And you don't care where it goes. Or you, you use one for like bursting or something like that. Exactly, and yeah, you, you yeah. Know, the rest of it on-prem. Correct. You know, so, you know, it's distributed, right? So who's going to plumb it and make sure that it's giving you the results that you need? That's where Contrail comes in. Gives you that plumbing between on-prem, between AWS. So how is that different from Kubernetes as a whole? Kubernetes like I know that it's, you know, it does like container management, orchestration, deployment, Correct. delivery. How, how right. does Contrail kind of come in and, and work with Kubernetes? Right. So, Great question, by the way. You know your stuff. So, <laughs> Kubernetes is, is um, Kubernetes is uh, orchestration for your workloads, right? It's, it's services. Kubernetes provides a, a service, like it gives you a service whip. Um, you have you deploy a bunch of Kubernetes minions. They all work together to give you that application that that you need. Now, what Contrail does is it provides the networking between those Kubernetes pods. So let's say uh, you want to scale up your application. Okay, you, you had 10 pods, now you want to go to 20. Kubernetes makes that decision for you that you need the 20 pods. And then Contrail is sitting under it, giving you the networking for those 20 pods. So when those 20 pods uh, spin up, Kubernetes pokes Contrail and says, hey, 20 more, and these need to talk to those 10 pods that were already there, so, right? So Contrail is open source, right? Correct. Why haven't you donated it yet to the CNCF? <laughs> we are part of CNCF. I totally, I know that. Yeah. But fundamentally, if Fundam you want that to be pulled as much as you do, yeah. it's already open source. You yeah, might as well right. kind of get on that thread with the Kubernetes right. folks yeah. and start talking to them about how you make it part of you know, the core distribution that then goes into you know, six different distros. Correct, but, correct. You yeah. know, something along so those I, lines versus I, don't start your own distro. <laughs> Sorry. Right, don't start your own distro. Um, but look at how you can become integrated into that Kubernetes Correct. stream. The yeah, main yeah, yeah, stream. exactly. Yeah, no, that that is definitely something that 
like you like you're saying, it's, it's it's something that we you know we want to do. That's the direction that we want to go at. But I think the actual decision is maybe above my pay grade, so I don't want to make a commitment Fair here. Enough. So, you know. <laughs> Isha, I want to follow up on a slightly different track when you talk about cloud first. And, and you answer the question, which is, when you say cloud first, is that you know, kind of the way you're going to market with your customers, or is that the way you guys are looking at Juniper in terms of transforming the company? Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you said it's more of the, the latter, really starting to reformulate Juniper Correct. as a cloud first exactly. service company. So how is that transformation going inside the company, that's a pretty significant it is, it is. shift yeah. from selling boxes and maintenance agreements and, yeah. and shipping metal. Yeah, we are definitely modernizing from within, right? But a lot of it is driven by our customers. Like I was saying, you know, they are evolving. They want to connect to the cloud and you know, we obviously want to help them do that. As part of that, we want to be microservices based, right? Because we want to be able to support containers. These are just things that you know, we need to do. Juniper is a leader as far as um, you know, innovation in, in networking. It, 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 it's concerned, right, so right. it was never a question of if we want to do this or if we want to go down this path or not, right? It's when, right? right and right. we are definitely working day in and day out to, to make that happen. So, um, you know, a lot of our offerings, like recently we came out uh, with our containerized uh, SRX solution. SRX is our uh, full feature, full service next generation firewall, and we have containerized it, right? I, I believe it's, it's the first offering of its kind, containerized host-based uh, firewalls. So, you know, innovative stuff happening all the time. Like you said, you know, it, it's um, it's definitely a, a Herculean task, right, but we are right, up for it and right. uh, we're doing it. And I'm just curious, in the customer conversations, yeah. you know, the, the hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, public cloud conversation, right, there's a lot of conversations. How do you take your customers down the path? Where do you see them you know, trying to navigate in, in what's got to be a pretty complex world for it is, a definitely. CIO trying to figure out what they're supposed to buy and not buy, how to pay attention. Can I hit all the booths right, here right, at right. AWS in three days? I don't think so. I <laughs> know, <laughs> yeah. These conversations, to be honest, have been going on for the past couple of years, right? A lot of our customers, the intent is there to move to the cloud and, you know, we want, we are, trying to help them for, with it. So we, you know, do des we design with them. We design their network, we design their topologies, we handhold them, telling them how to do this, right? Their, their existing networks that they have. The complexity comes in because um, everything, right, think of a company, right, a large company, it then goes ahead and acquires 10 more and they all have their own network, they all have their own environments, VMware, Red Hat, Nutanix. So different kinds of environments now all need to connect to the cloud. You don't want them to be siloed. You also don't want to deal with, you know, all those different kinds of, uh, like I was saying, you know, skill set to be able to connect them all individually. So when we talk to our customers, that's what we tell them, that, you know, with a Juniper-based solution, we have uh, so many of them that work together in a cohesive way to give you that end-to-end -end connectivity, secure, automated, multi-cloud. That, that's our mantra, right? And it's as far as you know, engineering is concerned, engineering simplicity. If you come down to Juniper, it's plastered all over the walls, right? Engineering simplicity. We were really driving that message internally so that, and, and a, a lot of the CICD stuff, right? The way we want our customers to use it is how we're using it. So that, you know, that improves our quality, that improves reliability, and, and all those things. So in terms of handholding our customers, we talk, you know, we, we're there on the table day one. We, we talk to them about their design. Um, I see that a lot of our customers currently where they're at is they are trying to connect to the cloud. Um, they all want to move towards the, contain, you know, uh, the containerized services. They know that's the right thing to do. They're not quite there yet, right? They, the intent is definitely there. They're playing with it, but in terms of being in production, we're still you know, a little bit off, not too much, but we'll get there soon, right? So we, we talk to them, we talk about you know, how they can make their applications cloud ready, there's a couple of ways to do it. You lift and shift, or you know, directly move, do go cloud native. Right, right. So we have all these discussions with them, what, you know, what fits their bill, right? What is good for them? What right. is it that, that's going to work for them? And then, uh, you know, of course, the connectivity piece, right? But with it, uh, security, reliability and scale, right? A, a company like Juniper, obviously, you know, innovator in networking, we solve problems for, at a different level, right? right, for, right. for our much larger customers. So uh, we talk to them about scale. We talk to them about, you know, reliable security is, is huge, right? Uh, you have a workload that you spun up on-prem and then now, you know, you have, your requirements have changed, you, you're going to have to replicate it, say, in AWS. 
when you replicate it, you still want the same security that you had on-prem to apply to this workload, which is now going to be in AWS. How do you do that? It's easy, with Contrary, right? Because it's intent driven. You specify the intent, you, in fact, you specified the intent when you brought up the first workload, and it captured it, okay, I'm supposed to talk to, you know, say I'm workload red, and I can only talk to other red workloads, and I cannot talk to the blue workload, something like that, right? right so right. you specify the intent, and then when that red workload now comes up in AWS, it already knows that I wasn't supposed to talk to the green workload, so that policy and all the intent moves with that right, workload, right. and this is all done through Contrail, right? And the other thing, the, that single pane of glass, I'm sure you've heard about it a lot today, right? The single pane of glass, you specify it one time. Again, the abstraction away from all those, you know, five clouds that you're working with. You specify the red workload, the policy for the red workload one time. And then it doesn't matter where you bring it up. Contrail will automatically apply it everywhere and you know, it's good to go. That's great. Well, Disha, thanks for coming on. You certainly got the energy to attack <laughs> this big problem. So, <laughs> Juniper's fortunate to have you. Great, thanks for Thank coming you on for and sharing this story. It's wonderful talking All to you right. guys. All right, Disha, Lauren, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're at AWS reInvent 2018. Come on down, we're in the main expo hall right by the center. Thanks for watching.